Today on The Friendly Futurist, we are looking at how saving water and also means saving your clothes can save the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your final boarding call for the Good Ship SS tomorrow. Welcome back, and today, actually, and first, let's do a trivia question. Trivia time, which wastes more water? A, your dishwasher, or B, manly washing the dishes? Find out the answer at the end of the show. Now let's talk about waste water because we all know that in a drying climate and on all climate change, that water is coming fast, becoming a precious resource. In fact, a lot of top economists are predicting that countries can go to water, war rather, over water resources, especially ones on a continent. Here in Perth, we have gone from one of the most consistent rainfall patterns in the 50s and 60s, right up to the 1950s and 1960s, into a more of a unreliable water source. So much so, according to the Water Corporation, now 38% of our city's water supply now comes from desalination. And I'm not really going to talk about recycling water, but this is some of the really facts, and this is why we need to consider water when we're talking about climate, because this... What else can sustain human life? We cannot live you know, two days without water. It's very precious to us. But today we're actually looking more focusing on on clothing and washing clothes because you might have that white business shirt in your closet with a yellow stain that might be leaking out and you might be tempted to throw it into the charity bin. But, you know, those charities will not take those. And, in fact, a lot of our clothes that we think will be going to charity actually end up getting shipped off to a, a third-world country and buried or going to landfill as textile waste. But there is a better solution to this. That is having more biodegradable, friendly laundry detergents, like my guest today, Nicole Gibson from Soka Australia and Vinnie Yong from the Happy Human Project. And we're going to look at ways we can actually save our clothes before we decided to throw them to the charity shops and going straight into landfill. We're continuing our quest and our understanding of this circular economy. And here's some more advice, actually.
So joining me on right now is Nicole. And Nicole, how, how do you keep we are about empowering people to be able to be more efficient and sustainable in their laundries at home. And we and we know that w- with people who, you know, throw out clothes, um, the main reason is because they're stains and they either can't be bothered, bothered, they're too lazy, or they simply don't know how to, you know, get those stains out. So I did invent a water-saving laundry tub that allows you to help with your stain removal and do your, and it obviously um, with saving water, you, you save detergent, um, you save space, you save a lot of sanity. So it really teams in nicely with being able to do some stain removal. And I suppose the, the key is people don't know what they're doing and then they sort of try something and they actually make things worse. So really stain removal is very, very simple. And I just like to teach people, you start at the, at the bottom and you, yeah. know, you escalate to see if you yeah. get the stain. Now what stain I really out. love about your project, Nicole, is this is a very clever way of growing tech. And uh, my ad, it's also environmentally friendly and bio- biodegradable, your products, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it, you can definitely, it's got a circular economy focus. So it's one product that you can, you, that is a, it's a solution for many household problems and also even the great outdoors. So if you, if you have like in general, I think the society is very disposable. They buy lots of one single items for one use where you, if, if you've got a lot of, if you don't have a lot of storage space, th- this tub, the soaker tub, you know, can tick all those boxes and, you know, save you space and save you, you know, clutter in your home. So, you know, perfect for camping, fishing, storage, you know, for the laundry, for a lot of people use it for compost. A lot of people use it for so many different things, which is fabulous. And at the end of the day, it can, you know, even the men's shed, buy them to put their little bits and bolts and stuff in in the garage. So you name it, we have it. But in obviously COVID times, a lot, a lot of people are using it to reduce the cross-contamination so they can separate their things, and especially also with patients on chemotherapy is also good. But, yeah, and at the end of the day, it can go back and be recycled. So we some offcuts, you know, or seconds or whatever, they get chomped up and they've made a ward. So it's it's all about circular mm, economy. Yep. And for those who don't know what is the circular economy, can you just give us a, what, it, what it is in layman's terms? Yeah, so the circular economy of, of an item is, for example, you know, we're talking clothes, so someone buys that that outfit, you know, maybe they hand it down to someone else to wear or sometimes people even, um, maybe there is a stain on it. Sometimes people are so creative they can make like handbags out of it or they can, you know, break it up and they can do some weaving or craft work with it. So it's, it's so many, you know, even for example, like ladies stockings, you know, there's a hole in it. Some people, you know, do it for craft for the, for the kids. Some people use it to tie up, stake up their, their plants and their, you know, their trellis things. So it's just, it just, it's a, it just keeps on giving and, you know, how you can be creative so it doesn't go to landfill. Yeah. And so, there's so many ways that this tub it just keeps on. It's the gift that keeps on giving. But I think a lot of people need to have in their mind, hey, what can I do yeah. with this now? And how big a problem is textile waste? I mean, we had that expose on Four Corners last month. But for those who don't know, how much of clothing yeah. is going into landfill that really shouldn't be going into landfill? Yeah. Well, if we focus here in Australia, it's over 800,000 tonnes a year. So when you break that down, it's about 31 uh, kilos per person. And you think, wow, and look, we're all at home. And I know a lot of people, they're doing a lot of cleaning. They're doing a lot of, you know, laundry things and trying to get stains out, which is amazing. But they're also doing a lot of decluttering. So the problem is people will... They buy. They just. They simply with clothes. They simply buy too much. I think on the on on the sunrise this morning, they had like seventy percent of people buy things they don't even wear. So it's about giving them. Yes, you can hand them down. You can give them to charities. There's lots of there's lots of avenues. Like there's, you can even make um, recycled clothes. They're making tiles and things like that. And that's part of like the circular economy. What can you do with these products? But yeah. 
the number one cause for why people throw out their clothes in the rubbish is because of stains. So, and 95% of those um, items could be, can be recycled. So it's, it's a big alarm bells and that's why I'm trying to help Australia, the world sort of, Hey, it's not hard and I'll, yeah. I'll show you how. And for, for an Australian context, what's some of the more common stains that people are coming across and they think oh, this is too hard to get rid of? Yeah, and people, like the most common stains, especially now with everyone being at home, um, is like the cooking, the oils, the foods, because we're all home cooking. So, and that's that's an easy one. And obviously, you know, my tips, I, I share a lot of tips and, and some things you need to act early. Obviously, the earlier you act with the stain, the better the outcome. If you leave it in the wash basket for a week, you run in the risk of, we could be in trouble here, but, you know, I still have been able to manage to get a lot of stains out. People actually even send me, um, you know, they buy a tub and, you know, they send me the items and I actually put their clothing back in the tub and send it back to them stain free. Yeah. Obviously it comes at a price, but you know, I, I I'm here to, you know, people can do this themselves. And I often talk through people on the phone. You know, there was a lady who had a mattress and she was in that trial period and, and it wasn't, the mattress wasn't suitable. So I helped her. I think her baby may have had a little bit of a wee blowout on the mattress. So, you know, they wouldn't accept that back. So we got that out and she got a thousand dollar refund because we got that out. Yeah. So her husband was very, very happy with me. (laughs) Can you see any more success stories like this? This is really good, Nicole. Oh, look, there's, there's been so many, oh, every day I'm inundated with, this is what I've tried. And they send me before and after pictures. And I think people love that. And I've even had people who have, it was an 80 year old great grandmother's like christening gown. And she was too afraid of being storage. And what happens when clothes are in storage, they start getting protein stains, which is like little yellow stains. And you, you know, you, you wash them, you put them nice and clean in a box and you know, whether it's a kid's keepsakes or whatever, and you come out and they're all like got these spots over it. It's just the protein stains and, and they will develop over time. We got, we can get those out really easily anyway but she was too afraid so she sent it to me I'm going oh the pressure of and this fabric was so delicate and 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 you know what I said look you know I'll give it a go this is and you you have to under I teach people about this is why you wouldn't you know scrub hard or or you know this is why you need to be gentle because of the fabric and or this fabric shrinks so we just discuss all of those things to just give people knowledge because at the moment People aren't learning this in school. Their parents aren't handing down those those skills. And it's, as I said, it's become such a disposable society. The, the youth are like, okay, what's the fashion for this season? You know, and they're just, they have simply have too many clothes. And I know on the other hand, my daughter, um, my eldest daughter, she loves op shopping like herself. And, you know, she will buy the dress for $2 or for $5. And, you know, you can't be seen at different parties in different clothes, um, which is great. So she is doing that circular economy and buying secondhand. But I said, there comes to a point, darling, that you need to re-donate those clothes for someone else to wear. So that's where she's at in the, at this mm, stage. Absolutely. And I like, I'm glad you brought up a great grandmother because I like that, that spirit. And we like to, I want to champion, I want to see you come back, is that the war of the present generation had that attitude of make do and men. And I think... Rather than buying constantly flies, and I'm guilty too, even as a bloke, of doing the same thing, we just need to just stop and just buy stuff that's quality and it's going to last. Yeah. Well, exactly. And I have people who follow me, I, honestly, they are from teenagers to grandparents. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's yes, it's clothes. It's why are my towels so hard? Well, you're using too much detergent. You're using fabric softener. And, <clears throat> And I just explain all the the whys so they understand. Um, and we simply, I think the big thing is people are using too much detergent and I'm just trying to save them money, save their quality. And, and the other of their clothes, the other big thing is you actually don't need to 
wash, like for example, jeans, you know, you, you don't have to, every 10 wears you would wash them. Denim is not designed to wash every day. And I would encourage people to air their clothes out. And that obviously saves electricity, saves water, detergent, like the list goes on. And it preserves, um, you know, the quality of the fabric. So there's a lot to be learned. I'm here to share and empower people um, to take ownership of their laundries and have more yeah, success. Absolutely. And I, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I seldom wash denim. <laughs> <laughs> you do, the, yeah. Well, are you a I'm laundry man, man Dave? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people who there's a lot of people who aren't and 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 you know I think they you know you say hey I want to talk about laundry and they go nah don't want to talk about that but you know it's it's someone I said well okay you need to ask your wife you know she will want to know and it's funny on on social media some of the comments I often get you know my husband always wonders why I'm watching you know laundry stories you know because. <laughs> It's, it's reality. And I suppose it's reality, no matter whether you live in a really posh suburb or you don't, whether you're you know famous or you're not, you can't get away from stains. You can't get away from doing laundry. And even during a global pandemic, laundry is never cancelled. Never. Never. <laughs> and... Thanks, Nicole. But also, let's look at the another angle about it, which is plastics. Now, if you're using if you're using laundry detergent stuff, being comes in plastic bottles. Plastics are not biodegradable. So, our next guest is Vinny Ong, who's got a simple solution of cutting back on plastics. And Vinny is joining us on the line now. And Vinny, how big is the plastic problem? Yeah, uh, sure. First of all, thanks for having me here. I'm really, really excited that, you know, we get to be on this podcast. You know, I think Australia alone on a micro scale or average Australian uses at least 130 kilogram of plastic per person. If you think about just the personal care household products, we use at least 50 single use plastic bottles of these products on a macro scale collectively. I think our country um, produces at least 3 million tons of plastic every year. And 95% of that are all discarded wow. after a single use. And unfortunately, so recycling as we were taught as a solution growing up is a little bit more than just a myth. Like only 9% of plastics um, ever produced gets recycled and the rest unfortunately leaks into the ocean or the landfill. And at this rate, I think scientists predict that we'll have unfortunately more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. So it is a pretty big problem that I think um, yeah. deserve a lot more attention. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Um, and yes, and this really opened up a scar. I mean, I know here in Western Australia, we've actually banned single-use plastics, but what else can be done with the plastic problem? You know, banning single-use plastic is definitely a good step towards helping to solve the problem. I think on a macro and a top-down level as well, like having more government support in terms of composting facilities and setting up those things would also really help. There's a saying that goes, you know, everything that gets produced you know, either return to the earth as some sort of food or poison. If you have these composting facilities, not just at like a home scale, but also at an industrial yeah. level scale, you know, a lot of these, you know, I guess, especially if they're compostable, can actually eventually return to the earth and, and become soil and kind of nurture the earth and becomes like a full cycle again. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who aren't aware, what's can you describe, no, I can describe, sorry, I'll, I'll start again. For those who aren't aware, um, what is Happy Human all about? What's your business? Yeah, sure. So we are an eco-friendly startup based in Sydney, and our mission is to end single-use plastic in all consumer products by encouraging this reuse and refill movement starting with the range of just at water cleaning products. How it works is that upfront, you get these reusable bottles once, and then going forward, you refill with this just at water tab, similar to a Barocca for your hand wash and surface cleaner. And because they're um, solid and not liquid, we can wrap them in wow. paper-based compostable packaging instead of single-use plastic. So that's how we achieve our mission. Not to mention also, obviously, with the condensed format, we save a lot of um, unnecessary carbon emission from just shipping water around the world because you can practically get it for free at home with the tap water. Mm. Awesome. And how 
how environmentally unfriendly is most household cleaning products? I mean, I think that's the, I mean, that's another side that most people aren't aware of. Yeah, I think there's like two parts to, to, to this question. Like one is on the ingredient side, you know, very, like conventional cleaning products contain chemical ingredients that research has shown harmful to our skin, eyes, or nervous system and toxic to animals. Um, I guess more specifically, there are all these like petrochemical solvents, ammonia, phosphates, like bleach that are, you know, I guess not very good for both the humans and animals. And also as it kind of returns to the earth, like it's very slow to biodegrade. So it's also toxic for the planet. And then the second part is obviously on the packaging side of things, which we really mentioned at the, at the start and introduction of uh, um, what Happy Human stands for. A lot of these plastic are, uh, a lot of these products are designed to be used once and thrown away. And so all these consumer products still comes in single use plastic packaging. And so I think there's definitely two prongs to it. Like one is obviously on the ingredient side that um, Happy Human, you know, we, we try to do as plant-based as possible, vegan, cruelty-free. And then the second part yeah. is on the packaging side of things where what we have innovated is um, condensing all these key ingredients that's equally effective, um, but then make it into a unique form factor such that we can um, package them in the most eco-friendly way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people are aware that even things like phosphates and stuff that are in your run of the mill cleaning products do end up in the, in the water system and do uh, lead to algal booms and all sorts of nasty stuff. So, and I also really like this, your products, Vinny, because, you know, this shows about technology, but technology does not necessarily mean what, what we can plant silicon chips in. It's also about, you know, creating environmentally friendly, um, products, which is which is clearly what you have, and I really give you a kudos for that. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I feel like you know, there's de- a lot of different form of innovation. Obviously, you know, computing AI um, can all help solve this problem, but at the same time, you know. I think um, Happy Human is also innovating through interesting, unique form factor. And with this condensed version, we're actually killing two birds with one stone. Not only are we reusing single-use plastic waste, we're also cutting down on unnecessary carbon emission from kind of shipping water around the world. So I definitely agree with you, you know, not, you know, it doesn't have to be like deep tech and AI to help build and create a cleaner planet. Yeah. And how has the Australian marketplace received your product so far? Yeah, we've, I guess, officially launched on Earth Day in April. So it's been three and a half months since we were live. So far, we're seeing really strong demand, very positive feedback. And early adopters have also come back for, you know, not even the second time, but the third time refill. So that's a really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And if you're listening in the Great Australia area or wherever you can find Happy Humans, please support this great little startup. And I like, really like to get, see this go really off the ground because this is just a fantastic idea it really is and what other products on the on the horizon for Happy Human, what what's in your research and development at the moment? We, we, we stay close to our customers. A lot of them actually wanted new scents for our hand wash and surface cleaner. They, I think, do our survey as well. A lot of people are asking for laundry and personal care products like your shampoo and body wash. We are um, starting to work on this. But yeah, like I think a lot of these takes time and capital. Um, so hopefully by end of the year, we would have new products coming out. And ladies, uh, we know that this show is about the future. And how do you envision the world in 10 to 15 years' time? Nicole, I'll start with you. I I would love to be able to share my knowledge and, you know, get people being more sustainable in their laundries at a, a broader level. So, you know, hopefully you'll see me on a morning show coming up soon. Have a look out. And we've got maybe a star in the making right here, folks. Nicole? Yeah, it's all starting yeah, here right. today. <laughs> Nicole, it's been an absolute pleasure. And we, what we might do, we might check up how you're going in, in a year's time and see see how everything's going. And good luck on your crusade. And this is another great example of, you know, keeping things for longer and stop this this, this narcissistic you know fast fashion trend that we've been used to for the last 40 years yeah which fabrics don't break down as well so that's another issue but yeah love to come back and it's also australian made australian owned so support australian small business and Vinny, what about you how do you envision the world in 15 to 20 years time 
To be honest, like, I don't know what's going to happen like a year from now on, but I think I, I love this question. I think if you kind of think yeah. about, you know, every single product, uh, consumer products around your home, like a lot of them still come packaged in single use plastic, not just home and personal care, but also a lot of these food products and then fresh produce and kind of going back to a saying where a lot of and everything we create and produce kind of ends up going back to the earth. It's either poison or food. I love to be, you know, from 10 to 15 years from now, the entire industry as a whole can keep innovating on materials such that every element of these products can eventually be compostable and return to the earth as soil or essentially food to nourish our planet and then kind of like allow us to kind of grow healthy crops yeah. again to kind of feed us. Yeah. Mm, yeah, well, look, crop, crop rotation and soil is actually a, quite a it's a pet it's a pet interest of mine for this podcast. I think this is regenerative agriculture and everything like that because the soil is important. I think most people don't realize that carbon sucking up carbon a lot of it goes into the soil. So I think it's very important that we have products like yours that are biodegradable and just encourage the soil to be enriched and, you know, do things like crop rotations, everything like that, you know, help the farms out. Because we help, we, we help the farms out, then we've got a stable food source and then we've got a sustainable food source. So I think it's, it's all in one big cycle. Plastic contributes to like 13% of the world's carbon emission. But I think there, there's the whole broader climate crisis solution. I'm sure you've heard what's going on in Germany and obviously Australia goes through bushfire, all this like flooding incident. And, and I feel like, you know, there is, there is a need for a bigger push and focus on mm. actual, like real action there. I think there's um, obviously us who are focusing on the plastic crisis. There's also different verticals, yes. you know, energy, transportation, food, carbon removal, which I'm pretty sure, I guess, uh, your po- like your podcast have been kind of covering quite a few verticals of that. So it's been very interesting for me as well to kind of like listen to what other peoples are innovating and doing to help being part of, to help be part of the solution. An answer to that trivia question, what uses more water? Actually, it's mainly washing the dishes because that takes a lot more energy and water to get up to the right temperature. Now, most modern dishwashers are actually quite water efficient and energy efficient, and they start off at the correct temperature, ask anyone hospitality of above 75 degrees, which will kill most bacteria and nasties that you can find in your food. You know what else is water hungry? Cotton. So join us next time as we actually going to discuss upcycling vintage clothing with two guests. We got Katrina Nash from A Feeding Connection and Annabelle and Sophie from Mills and York, both in Melbourne. We've got separate programs about recycling clothes because we all know that fast fashion is one of the most environmentally unfriendly industries in the world not just impact on the environment it's impacting on society so stay tuned next time now the friendly futurist is a podcast west production has been produced and edited by me dave monk and further editing by alvin lacerna if you love this show the best thing you can do for me is download the acast app and start following this show. Give us a five-star review when you're there and help us grow this community. The best form of marketing is also word of mouth. So tell your friends, neighbors, green grocers, dog walker, anyone who's interested in big picture thinking because we are creating a community here of inspired individuals just like you who are going to be the next academics, entrepreneurs, ones with really big picture thinking so we can get some awesome solutions to the world's problems and we can make a better future for everyone. Until next time, friends, remember, stay curious and the future is user-friendly. Another Podcasts West Production.